Okay, since it's taking a little more time than I expected to get my next video out, I figured I'd just do a quick collection video. I'll try to just do it all as one take and put it directly up on YouTube. So I'm not going to cover everything right now, but I am going to take a look at my main Detolf shelves and basically, yeah, we'll leave it at that for now, I think. So, um, I guess we could start up at the top. The top is a lot of my X Plus stuff. So starting over here on the left, I have the beginning of my Destroy All Monsters set. These are all the 30 centimeter figures. So Gorosaurus, Varan back there, which was the first X Plus I picked up. Baragon, which has that optional Destroy All Monsters head, which is nice for this. Uh, Rodan, Minya, Mothra Larva, Godzilla there in the back, and then of course my favorite, Anguirus. That's... Not just one of my favorite X-Plus figures, but my favorite Godzilla Kaiju. Uh, I do have some Rampage figures. I did break down and buy them. They're not too shabby. They're they're okay for what they are, for being Walmart exclusives, but they're very freaking large, too. Lizzie's pretty impressive. It's a very large uh, figure from head to tail. Then some more miscellaneous X-Plus. I have my King Kong vs. Godzilla. Godzilla. My Gigan. Gigan was one of my favorite villain kaiju, so it was cool to get him as an X+. Plus. I have the 84 here, which I'm kind of considering selling. It's not my favorite suit. I got him on discount, so I kind of just... yeah. <laughs> and same here with the, the 2001... no, not 2001. It's like 2003? I forget. Uh, the Mechagodzilla version. And, uh, yeah... Uh, signed box back there with Gigan from uh, Ken Satsuma. And then another one of my favorite X-Plus figures. This is the Train Biting Godzilla, the Monochrome Edition. Uh, I absolutely love it. It's a concept of the original Godzilla, and it's just very brutal looking. Really cool. Uh, down here I have the Pacific Rim prop replica slash action figures. And then back there, I have the, uh, it's a bootleg, unfortunately. I didn't know that when I bought it. But it is a Godzilla skeleton kit, which, it's cool looking. It's just, it sucks that it's bootleg. So, I'm back all the way over here to start with the Detolfs themselves. And this first one, I've got some Terminator 1 figures, the two T-800s from Hot Toys. In the second shelf are my Terminator 2 figures, the Linda Hamilton with the signed display base back there. Oh, well, Sarah Connor, but signed by Linda Hamilton. And then uh, the T-800 from that movie. And then I have the uh, Wasteland Ranger, basically the Mad Max, uh, Fury Road, unofficial figure. I still need to get the Furiosa, but that one's pretty damn cool. I'm... I 3D printed out a uh, display base for him. That was on my early 3D prints, so it's a little warped. So I do need to redo that at some point, but I still like it. And then down here is the astronaut statue from Alex Pardee. I got that from him at a con a couple years ago. It's very different looking than everything else in my Detolfs, but I do like how it looks. And then we start the Godzilla shelves here. These are mostly monster arts. Um, so basically I got, uh, kind of some generic Godzillas in this one. So the 54, the 2000, the GMK, and the 64. And then I didn't really have a better place for it, so there is the, I think it's a Super X, yeah, Super X1 back there. That is the Bandai Machine Chronicles figure, or toy, or whatever you want to call it, but it fits well with the, uh, display stand for the Tomashi figures. So, it can live there for now. I actually forgot to put my NECA 84 on display since that's the only one that exists. Let me pop the case open so there's maybe a little less glare. That's a little better. But, uh, yeah, I need to get that NECA figure back out and put it in here just because there is no Monster Arts of it yet. Then we got some more Godzillas down here. We got the 2014. I have the Spitfire on display with the Severed Mudo head. And then the Shin Godzilla forms. I really wanted to get that Awakening version. Um, I had it on order, but then the order got canceled, and 
by the time that happened, the figure just went up like crazy on the secondary market, so I never got one. Down here, I have my mech kaiju, cyborg kaiju, kinda. Um, so the two mecha Godzillas from the Millennium series, and then the Final Wars Gigan. And then here's some more just kind of side characters from the Showa era. So the Revel Tech, uh, Gigan, and Angiris there in the front with the. Uh, oh, jeez, I can't remember the name of that spaceship now from Destroy All Monsters. I'm totally blanking on it. Then I have my uh, Monster Arts, uh, Mecha Godzilla, and then the Jagokin Mecha Godzilla, which is actually the Mecha Godzilla 2 from Terror of Mecha Godzilla. So since now I have a standard looking Mega Godzilla, I took the head off that one and put the brain top on there. And then another Revel Tech, the Mogira, Mogura. I can never pronounce it right, but uh, the one from Mysterians, not actually a Godzilla movie, but still a Toho film. Alright. The only problem with doing this live is that you have to watch me open and close cases now. One of my favorite setups in my DJ, actually this set up here and the one below it are two of my favorites so we have the biolante one of my favorite monster arts figures ever it was so worth all the frustration i went with to get her and then the uh i was called the kkk godzilla because i can't pronounce the japanese stuff and apparently i must have taken his batteries out or they died i should check on that but uh yeah so he's in there he is too big. He's bigger than the normal Monster Arts figures. So he stands a little too tall next to Biollante. But, you know, it's the right Godzilla for the scene. So I decided to keep him in there. And I do have the Super X2 back there ready to fire. So it's nice that I have all three Super X ships. I'm really disappointed Monster Arts never did the Super X one. But, I mean, I have one. But it's just not in the same series. Granted, these are still kind of hard to get. They've never re-released them or anything. And then probably my favorite Godzilla display. I know I've shown this every video I've done of this shelf. And it's pretty much stayed similar throughout the time. But uh, this is a Godzilla vs. Destroyer shelf. For whatever reason, they hit this movie hard with the figures they released. So I've got the Destroyer. Unfortunately, with some missing little wing plates because they are so fragile. I have the uh, Comic-Con Explosion Godzilla there in the back, which is supposed to represent Meltdown. I have, I think it's the original release, 95 Godzilla or 94 Godzilla, 94, um, but it is uh, just kind of standing in for like adult junior, basically. I have the normal junior up there in the front. I've got the different stages of Destroya here, except for the one that is climbing on the Meltdown Godzilla. This is the 2.0 that has the smoke effects and everything. I've got the Super X-3 back there completing the trilogy and the little helicopter that came with Junior. Just one of the two in here, but uh, yeah, I don't know. I love this setup. I kind of think I need to do something to elevate the two Godzillas in the back, so maybe they're taking up some more vertical space in the Detolf, just so that you can actually see them, but I like it. And then coming down a shelf, we have my flight mode shelf, I guess you could call it. I'm actually, huh, okay, so Rodan was in here at one point, and I don't know where I put him, so he might be in a box still, <laughs> but uh, yeah, so this used to have Rodan up at the very, very top, but now it has Mothra and Batra in flying form, and their larva forms, and then some of the accessory planes and things that have come out over the years. And then also some of the generic tanks and mazers. Actually, just tanks there at the bottom. And then bottom shelf here, we have Ultraman. So, man, I am so out of touch with Ultraman, I can't remember half the names. But one of my favorite things in here is the prop replica gun from the series that came out a while back. And I kind of gave up on this line. I was collecting the figure arts figures, and they switched them over to the monster arts or... Ultra Act, I mean, they switched into figure arts. I can't keep track of this anymore. But, uh, yeah, so basically, I kind of gave up trying to recollect them. But I do want to pick up some more of the kaiju because they're definitely cool. Man, that's going to bug me, though. Rodan's missing out of this. 
Oh, well. And then up here, I've kind of got my Godzilla versus King Ghidorah set. So the original King Ghidorah, I have him on the flight stand from the reissue, but it is the original King Ghidorah up there with the crappy wings. The Mecha King Ghidorah there in the front, the Dorats down there. The Time Machine being the tiniest stupid accessory sitting on a Tamashi stage that is way bigger than it is. And then that is my 2.0, or I think it's my Rebirth, so it's technically Junior Godzilla, but the more articulated of the two in this set. Then moving away from Godzilla for one panel, or one cube, I have some other Tokusatsu stuff. I, I guess Voltron's technically not Tokusatsu, but you know what I mean. Uh, but yeah, it's the Chigokin, Soul of Chigokin, I think, Voltron, which is an amazing set. I know I did a really long review on that before. And then in the same line is the Megazord, or the Daijuz Daizujin. Oh, man. <laughs> I am not good with those Japanese names today, I guess. But, yeah. Uh, beautifully done figure. Absolutely love it. Down here at the bottom are, I think they're calling the Mini Pla. They're model kits. So that one is the Daizujin tank mode. And uh, those all assemble in both forms, just like the big one does. But they're... Just a model kit, you have to assemble each Zord individually. And they recently came out with a Dragon Caesar. And I know Chigokin's doing a Dragon Caesar soon, or Dragon Zord soon. And then they're doing the Titanus. Uh, I can't remember which what the names are for Japanese and English. I can't remember if Titanus is the Japanese name or the English name. Uh, is it like King Brachion or something? I don't remember, but the uh, the, the giant... Vegisaurus from Jurassic Park that acts as a chariot for the Megazord. Uh, that's coming out as a kit soon, so I may pick that up, but it's a little more expensive because I guess it has electronics in it. Oh, there's Rodan. Ha, ha, ha. I guess I put him with the Mechagodzilla stuff because that makes sense. That's his movie anyway. So yeah, there's the Fire Rodan figure. And the Mechagodzilla 2 with Garuda, the original releases for those, not the reissue. Not that it matters that much, but in case you were curious. Then that's that new poster version of Mechagodzilla. Really cool figure. Uh, very fiddly to transform, but really nice. Uh, Baby Godzilla, Space Godzilla with all the crystals, including the ones from Little Godzilla. And the Mogura, Magura, whatever. Ah, not doing well with that one today. And then... Some Mazer tanks here at the bottom. Something I forgot to mention to destroy us set. I do have the the ice Mazer tanks or the ice tanks down there. So those are with that set, but the rest are down here. And then at the very bottom, I have a very jam-packed Gamera shelf. So this is. A lot. There's the figure arts one there, or monster arts one there in the back left. Then a lot of Revel Tech. There's the uh, Show Show Era one there with the spinning, flying mode. The um, Gauss there from Show Era. Then a Chigokin um, Toto, which is like the second Gamera, I guess technically from the the movie that wasn't made by Daie, with also his baby form there. And then, I guess technically this is more of a Daie shelf, except from what I just said with Toto, but whatever. Um, so there's a Daimajin there. Man, I am just terrible with names today. Then one of the little mini things that come with Rebel Tech figures. And I think this is the Rebel Tech from, I think it's Guardian of the Universe, if I remember right. And then the, uh, the more modern, the Heisei era Gauss there with the smaller one. I think that's the Legion Revel Tech Gamera. Some of the little Legion characters and the mini Gamera there. And then Legion herself. And then, coming back up, we're starting a new trend here. And these will have to go kind of in a different order because they're ordered differently. <laughs> but here are my Dragon Ball figure arts. And up here in the back, I have the new kid Goku on the Flying Nimbus, the Shenron, and then I've kind of supplemented things out with some customs and some older figures. 
So back there is like the Irwin King Kai, just because all he has to do is sit there anyway, so he works well enough. This cube is just kind of like a general, I'm going to make it maybe more Dragon Ball slash early Z pre-Saiyan Saga or pre-Saiyan Arrival. And then to complement that, I have a custom, um, I guess, Raditz fight Goku where he doesn't have the undershirt or the boots or the wristbands on. It's a little sloppy. I'm not entirely happy with how it's come out. The feet are a little small. They're off of the, I think, the Figma body, the, the generic body figure. But it looks okay. Once that kit comes out for the figurized Piccolo, I'm planning to add in a Piccolo to go with him. And then maybe one day we'll actually get a Raditz figure, which would be awesome. And then let me switch over here. And here I have my Saiyan Saga set up. So I've got, it's actually the bootleg Vegeta up there. It's the Datong Vegeta. And I have some effects on him from Can of Beams to kind of be the beginning of the Gallic Gun. Got a custom shirtless Goku doing the Kamehameha down there. The figure doesn't stay together very well, but I think it works for this. It's basically uh, taking the upper torso of Tien. I put on some old Goku arms I had from another figure. And yeah, he more or less works as a Saiyan Saga final battle Goku. And I have the figurize Saiyan pod. The Nappa and the newer Vegeta figure, the reissue of the Scouter Vegeta. Uh, four Cybermen, because I bought that many Yamchas. And then my set over here of the Z Fighters from Earth. I still have to obviously supplement this out. I want to get another one of those figurized Piccolos in here to be that Piccolo. But I have the Yamcha, I have the Tien. And then this is obviously the Chiaotzu that comes with Tien. I'm working to customize one because obviously I have spares because I customized off that body. So I want to make one that stands up just by cutting off his limbs and remolding and painting him. But that's proving a little more difficult than I intended. And then in here is um, Krillin. This is the figurized Krillin, but I found a tutorial on YouTube and I'll try to link it below if I can find the tutorial again. It's not even really a tutorial, now that I think about it. It just kind of briefly talks about a few things. But basically, you could take the figurized Krillin and make him the Saiyan Saga. And he's roughly the same height as the figure arts Krillin. And I think he actually looks a little better, to be honest. So, yeah, it was pretty easy to make one. Basically, it's the different shoes and the no undershirt that makes it the Saiyan Saga. Or it's the same looking super, I believe, as well. So, yeah, I don't know. I think it's kind of cool to have that version of Krillin in the mix. And then down here, I feel like they get much less epic past those two shelves because they're a little more uh, sparse, especially this one. This is the Namek or Frieza Saga. So I have my Awakening Goku with the Frieza, Figurize Frieza back there in his chair, and then a poorly done, needs to be repainted, custom Vegeta with his Namek armor and the Erwin Gohan figure in Saiyan armor. I do want to get another Vegeta figure, basically to steal the armor from. I'm kind of hoping eventually, like Dragon Stars will do one with this armor, so it would be less of a pain to steal. But I want to make a Krillin. I have spare Krillin heads, so it'd be cool to have a Namek Saga Krillin there. And then over here, I have Android Saga, which I didn't think I'd have enough to make a full shelf, but I did. I have. Uh, and the three androids back there. Then I have, see, 19? I forget which one that is. 19, I think, from Irwin. Uh, those ones are all figure arts over there. I actually have a bus that came with the Rampage figures, but it felt like it worked with these. And then I have the original Trunks. I have Gohan, which is actually like a Ben Presto statue I got on clearance at um, Books A Million. But he fits decently in scale for that era. And then I have a Goku, I try to have him doing the, like, heart virus thing, where he's, you know, dying in the middle of the android fight. But I love this hair sculpt. This is the one from the Awakening figure. It's so much better than the one we got on the uh, original release. So I may be stealing it for something else later. And then I come down to my Cell Saga cube. And this one, I have the... Uh, Erwin, Mr. Satan, there in the background, or it was probably advertised as a Hercule figure. 
and a little Cell Junior I found at a secondhand shop. And then my Z Fighters, uh, Piccolo's taking a nap there, but I have Yamcha, it's the same Yamcha body from Figuarts, but I stole the head off of a Banpresto figure and put it on there, so it's the right hairstyle for that look. He also has some custom decals on his gi. And then Tien, which is another kind of crappy custom, all my customs I feel are kind of crappy, but he works. I used a, uh, I think it was a bootleg Goku upper torso, and then kind of molded in around the neckline. And painted it all white, so that works for his t-shirt mode. Like I said, that's the original Piccolo there, if he's taking a nap. It's Krillin and Vegeta and Trunks. The original release, Cell. Uh, the spare head for 16 with the damage. I know it's not really accurate to that scene, but it works. And then they have the father-son Kamehameha going on over here. And I just realized that this shelf is a mess. I didn't look at it before I started filming, but... Hey, my Boo Era Saga shelf, yeah, needs work, but you can kind of get a look at the characters. I have the new Super Saiyan 3 Goku back there, the Mystic Gohan. Um, I forget that character's name, the light-eating monster from Bobbity's ship. I found him at a second-hand store cheap, so it's another Irwin figure, but pretty cool. Or is it Jack Specific? I don't know. Jack Pacific, not specific. What the hell am I talking about? And then another one of the Boo figures, I think from Irwin or Jax, actually two of them here, the uh, Evil Boo and the Super Boo, which are decent stand-ins for now. I got the Figure Rise Kid Boo, which is a little too tall, but he works okay. A uh, really crappy Irwin um, Krillin down there. I got these Bandai, oh, I forgot what they're called. They're another line Bandai did years ago with some more articulated figures. They did a Kid Boo, but he's really expensive. But there's two different Go Tanks they released. So I have those here with the little Kamikaze Ghosts. Figure Arts Vegito. And then another Goku, which is a custom um, hair that's supposed to be a Super Saiyan 2 hair sculpt. It works okay. It's not my favorite because it actually is a little smaller than the standard Super Saiyan hair, but... It pretty much works, and I like the paint on it. And then down here, I've got my super shelf. So I've got Super Saiyan God Goku versus Beerus with Whis over there. The two blue versions of Goku and Vegeta fighting Golden Frieza. And I still have to add some more figures in here, but I have the new um, Dragon Star stuff. So I have the, uh, basically, what would you call it? The uh, Goku Black Arc Trunks. And the uh, the hit figure that they put out that are not released as figure arts yet. And then over here, another figure taking a nap that I didn't notice, but I have the figure eyes, Goku and Vegeta in Super Saiyan 4, figure arts Broly. And then the uh, Xenoverse Trunks there, the Time Warrior, which is a horrible figure. I don't advise buying it. I got mine really cheap. And then uh, a sort of custom kit bash I did of uh, the BoJack movie version of Trunks. So yeah, I've got a lot of figures. We'll, we'll go over here and look at one more little area. I do have some masks over here I'll cover real quick. Um, these three here are the uh, Vacuform Michael Myers masks put out by Trick or Treat Studios. And I had bought three last Halloween and painted them up in the, the style of the uh, Papa Emeritus masks from Ghost. I think they look kind of cool. They were a nice, cool, white base template. And, I mean, some I had to modify. Like the Papa one I added a lot of flesh tone to. I don't know how well you could see it, but there's a lot of flesh tone kind of bleeding out through the mask. Papa two, not so much. And the Papa three does have some around the edges. I guess I need to get at least one more and make a Papa Zero, and I don't know. The new Cardinal Copia doesn't really have that kind of face paint, so I don't know if he'll get one. But yeah, that was kind of a fun project. And then here are my actual mask collection stuff. Uh, a couple haunted mask things. I now I can't remember brands offhand, but uh, I've got my haunted mask. This is not the Trick or Treat Studios one. I got this. I think it's like Longshore masks or something like that. Freaking phenomenal mask. I love how this came out. It's just beautifully done. And this is the DWN Productions. It's supposed to be a haunted mask too. 
bought it right before Trick or Treat Studios announced they were doing an officially licensed one, and I like the sculpt that Trick or Treat has better, so this guy might be getting sold soon. And then over here is not a clan mask. This is uh, from the band Ghoul, and they uh, sold this. Last time I saw them in concert, they had these for sale. You just have to cut your, eye, your own uh, eye holes in it, but I don't know. it looks kind of weird because it's just on a stick right now. But basically, it uh, when it's on somebody's head, it basically looks like their nose and mouth is spewing blood from underneath the hood. And then over here, I have the uh, three Trick or Treat Studios Halloween 3 masks. And then, by complete accident, this shelf ended up being Beyond Disgusting Studios. I have the two Jason hoods, the uh, Part 2, and then the remake over here. And then in the middle, my newest acquisition from them is... A uh, Chucky skull. This is like a one-to-one -one replica. Child's Play 2 Chucky skull. I think if you go to their site, you could buy just the skull. Um, I had ordered mine, and they had to delay the order significantly because they had to redo the mold, I guess, um, and re-sculpt some things to make it more accurate, which I was happy enough anyway, but they threw in this display base as part of it, which is phenomenal looking. So, I mean, it's all resin, but it really does look like metal, so I don't know. I'm, I'm super pleased with it. And then I've got two ghost face masks. The one on the left is just the standard ghost face. The one on the right is like the mummy version. Eh, I, I'm not huge on the mummy version. I may get rid of that one, but I saw it on like clearance at Halloween. And I picked it up. Uh, down here I have the Part 3 Jason hood and hockey mask that I've used for my cosplay. And on the right, I have the Trick or Treat Studios Nameless Ghoul Mask. And there at the bottom, I have my baby face mask with a uh, kind of pseudo hood for it. I have the Concept Leather Face Mask from Trick or Treat Studios, and I have the Orphan Killer Mask. And then Piggly No Wiggly from Holliston. And then my Myers Mask across the top. Mostly Trick or Treat Studios, except for the Part 5 and the Rob Zombie stuff. Everything else I think is Trick or Treat. The knives up on that shelf are also Trick or Treat Studios. And the mid row I have. These are all the Trick or Treat um, Leatherface masks. So the three from the original movie. And then over here I've got some. Uh, oh my gosh. Why can't I think of the name of the, the studio that made these? Uh, I found them on eBay. They are phenomenal. Even if I can't remember who made them, I'll try to put an annotation up later or something or in the description. But a part two, a part three, they're definitely stylized, but I really like them. And then uh, on the right here was actually a Ruby's uh, remake mask that I redid. I'll probably be getting rid of this and getting the trick or treat version down the road when that comes out. But for now, I redid it. It all has actual stitching in there with uh pleather stitching and i redid the hair on it so it looks a little more like leatherface than the original one did i also repainted it and then down another row in the last little bit here i have the ashy slashy puppet from neca uh so trick-or-treat evil dead props the trick-or-treat uh, sam lollipops the chucky knife the leatherface mallet and the leatherface hook and the scythe from Leslie Vernon. A few NECA Freddy gloves. The Image Motor Productions. Um, Gingerbread Man from Krampus. I have in the back there, there's a uh, cane from the Wolfman, which is based... Uh, that's from... Uh, I got a Dragon Con. I never remember that vendor's name either. And then in the back, you can see there's a plaque in front of it too which is the uh, hatchet prop replica, I guess made from the mold, straight from Aries Scope, so that's pretty damn cool. And then, uh, I forgot, Chucky is hanging out on the shelf, the NECA Ultimate Chucky, and then some parts that I was trying to make a uh, custom Saiyan Saga Gohan from, but never finished. And, uh, I guess not technically masks, but up here, well, I guess it is a mask, but up here I have the uh, Haunted Mask from... Uh, it's based on the book version, and this is from Trick or Treat Studios, but sold through Fright Rags. I also have the Fright Rags Predator mask up there. And then this thing I picked up at Dragon Con, the Collegeville Clown. Uh, well, it's not the mask, it's uh, it's an art print. I think the company's Artovision, 
they have some cool stuff. It's these multi-layered shadow box art pieces. And it really looks like the mask is in there. But it's really just layers of like paintings, basically. So, all this is a work in progress. So we'll get back to this at some later date. But that is the primary chunk of the collection. I'm sure somebody's going to bitch at me for not having horror stuff. That's kind of in another place at the moment. Actually, a couple other places, but... Right now, this is the primary bit of my office.